Hey everyone, Miss Gomez here. I went ahead and printed the picture of the dog I'm going to draw and got a piece of copy paper out. Um, I had to print it a little bit smaller than how I had enlarged it in the Google Doc because I wanted the image and the drawing paper to fit in my recorded screen. But um, if you went ahead and printed yours full page, that's fine too. All of the techniques I'm going to share with you can be translated no matter how big you printed your picture. Like I said, you don't have to print your picture. You can always just draw from a computer screen and make the markings. Um, guidelines that I'm going to show you um, over the picture digitally, um, if you could figure that out. Um, but Essentially, I feel like these are like the most simple, direct uh, ways that we can get started on this portrait um, to break it down and make it a little bit easier for you. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was um, like the quality of your work. I know many of us have different artistic styles and abilities. Um, I don't, I want you to have fun with this. I don't want you to feel very intimidated and think that you need to create a photorealistic image. Um, granted, I mean, if we were to do a photorealistic image, I mean, you know, what's the purpose of creating it if it's going to look exactly like the photograph anyway? We want there to be some style and creativity with it, so it does not need to be super, super detailed, but if you can try and capture the, um, the characteristics of the animal, um, that would be great. So in the live session demo that I had with the students, um, my expectations I shared with them um, would be something like this. So this is the where I stopped demoing. I didn't get to finish. But this is kind of like a good start to a drawing if you were to do it in pencil. Um, this was something I compared it to what I hope that maybe you don't do, um, where it's too general, too simplified. Um, it doesn't really look too much like the cat. Um, you know, we could... We could you know, if we were to simplify it and make it super abstract, then we can get a picture of a cat anywhere from the internet and copy it and say that it's that specific animal. But we want to be able to capture the unique parts of that animal. Like um, in their picture, they have the head tilt. They might have different shades or patterns in their fur, um, different facial expressions, different color eyes. Um, you can pick um, anything that you could find in the animal to personalize your drawing and make it more unique to that specific animal. Um, not, that's not to say that something that is a little bit more simple and abstract can't be personalized and creative. We talked about um, creating some designs on the background, perhaps maybe even incorporating their name in a fun way in the background, but we'll get a little bit into that a little bit more later. Um, also, the technique that I'm gonna be showing you is gonna be requiring you to do a simple grid to kind of break down your drawing area into four quadrants. And we're gonna draw um, the animal in those areas to help us center it, find it, find our placement of things, try and get the proportions um, right before we add any crazy detail. Okay, so this is just um, an example of what I started with in the demo earlier. And I figured um, that I, I switch it up and do a dog for this one instead. That way you guys can have another visual example. Um, so what I would like for us to start with is to create the grid. So an easy way to do that without any measuring is to fold your paper in half, both vertically and horizontally. So then you're going to want to do the same boxes on your drawing paper. Now, these are just guidelines. So we don't want to make anything on our drawing that's too distracting that we can't remove at the end. So I'm just going to very lightly crease it in the middle. I'm not going to do a complete fold. Okay, so there's the center. And then I'm going to, you could use a ruler or you could freehand it or use like a straight edge, a book, a folder, another sheet of paper, just to help you divide it. Remember, super light, so we can erase this later. We don't want there to be like a really dark line in the final drawing. All right, so from here, what I would recommend you do is take a, a moment to just 
really pay attention to the shapes that are in the animal. We want to simplify the shapes of their face. Um, so we can see um, generally in order to get the, the 3D effect of the drawing so that like the nose looks like it's coming at you, there's two shapes here that we want to concentrate on. The shape of the head, of like the skull, so it would be here, and then the shape of the muzzle where the mouth and the nose area is going to be drawn. So those two shapes are going to be overlapping one another. So I'm going to use my pencil to kind of just simplify that over the drawing. I mean, over the photo so I can get a sense of where to put those on my drawing paper. Next, you're going to notice that there are some triangles attached to the larger oval for the ears. Okay. And then a little later on, we will add all of the extra like little details um, for the eyes and any um, markings on the fur, the different colors and whatnot. Another thing is the lines that come out for the body and the shoulders. This is a big shape here, that white patch of fur. All right, so I'm gonna start with that. Okay, I think that would be really good. Oh, another thing you could do is you can create a guideline to connect the eyes so that the, the eyes end up um, being uh, in the right general area and you can understand that they need to line up and they're not, you know, wonky or anything. So we're gonna start with that oval and what you're gonna notice is the oval is gonna be towards the upper half of the, um, of the space. So the, the oval for the head, for the skull. And I would say three quarters of it are above the middle line and just a little bit of it is under. So I'm going to also think about how wide it is, all right? The width of the head come to about a little bit past halfway from so from here to here, a little bit closer to the right. And then from here to here, a little bit co closer to the left. So I'm going to kind of do that here just to give myself um, something to reference when I draw my circle. All right, the top is way higher than the bottom. And in relation to the middle and the top of the picture, the top of the head is about two thirds of the way up, a little bit higher than halfway. So I'm gonna do that there, all right? So now I'm going to just draw a general oval. You don't have to get your oval to be exactly on those markings on the lines. You just want it to be expanded to that general area. So like my oval is not really looking very ovally, so I need to fix that. There we go starting to look like a hot mess express, but don't worry, if you're drawing lightly, this will not be an issue. We're gonna get rid of it later with the eraser. All right, the next shape I wanna do is the muzzle. All right, the muzzle comes up a little higher here, past the center, and then it goes, I wanna say midway from the center to the bottom, down here, the bottom of the mouth. All right, so we're gonna do another circle here. Okay, next you're going to figure out the shape of the ear. Okay, so the ear, there's a little bit of a gap between this line and the top of the circle, and then there's also another gap over here. So somewhere in here, in here. It seems like a big space, but you know, that's where the skin connects, so we need that. And then it goes all the way up to the corner. Something like that. Okay, then the next ear, he's got a little folded over ear, which is so cute. Um, that one will be, like the point of it is towards the middle, then it goes down, something like this. All right, so try, try and get like similar spacing or working with proportion here, or trying to get it to look similar. Could always tweak things later, but just want the general placement of everything. Okay, next thing I think we should do is uh, we'll do the sides of the cheeks, kind of connect these two. Okay, 
And then I think we could do the nose. The nose is another big shape. It's really important. So it, the nose comes to the top of the muzzle and then about midway down, we have uh, the end of the nose. So about here. So the nose is gonna be drawn in this area, okay? And then if you want to, now we can split up the mouth and do this part of the mouth, the muzzle here, the little flappy mouth area. We can do that sort of a shape there, that shape there, okay? Uh, next thing I think we could do is the eyes. So I don't know if you can see, I made that line going across the eyes. It is about just under halfway up from the center to the top. So somewhere in there. So if that's the center to the top, down here, and it, it curves. Okay, and then the eyes are, they're on the sides of the head a little bit. They're not directly in front and they're not strictly on the sides like, like a horse or a cow. So we wanna get that sort of angle. Notice the spacing between the eye and like the back of the head or the ear here. All right, and the spacing between the line that guideline and the corner of the eye. So I would say somewhere in here is the eye, somewhere in there. All right, the next one is maybe up here, okay? All right, next, uh, I guess we could do the upper body just so he doesn't look like a floating head. And I would say that that's about here. And this is about here. And then you have a little bit of it, like his belly deck back here. We have the line for the white part of his chest. And, okay. All right, so we have the general shape. It's not looking like the best drawing ever right now. We wanna clean it up and add some more details. So I'm going to erase. All right, we could certainly clean it up a little bit more later, but I think I'm ready to start adding some color or shading. Remember, you can um, use whatever materials you want. You could stick to just pencil and paper or after you get your drawing details, all worked out in pencil, you can go ahead and use ink or markers or paint, or whatever it is that floats your boat, whatever you feel confident in using. But the minimum requirement is just to use pencil. You could do, you could certainly create a beautiful drawing with a simple material like that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to add um, some details and shading. I guess an important detail that we can do here is the, the nostrils. They're really hard to see in this picture. So I'm gonna try to go by like the shape of the shadows that I see. I want to go back in and kind of make it more detailed, more than just general lines. Get the wrinkles, get the little patches of, of fur that are in different colors, the rough edges around different parts of their skin or their fur. Pay attention to where like there are dark sections compared to light sections. Kind of block out those areas so that later on when you color it in or when you shade it, you have a good idea of where to put those different values and colors. 